So a uh, class that defines a linked list looks something like this. Public class linked list E implements list I E. Okay, that should be the first line of your linked list code. And then we're going to have an inner class. This inner class is of type node E. And our inner class has two things, remember? We've just seen them. In our, in our node object that we drew, we had two things. We have our next pointer and our data. Okay. So our data is of type E. We don't know what that is, and we don't care what that is. It's just some whatever generic type that if you're using our linked list, that we're making a contract that we'll put in there. And our, our next is a pointer to another node. So that's going to be of type node E, i.e. of ourselves. Next. So we've got our two variables, our next and our data. And then we just need a constructor. And our, our nodes, we're not going to have nodes with nothing in them. Our nodes always have something in them. So we're going to have a public node constructor. And this is going to take specifically an object. We don't care what it is. It's just of type E. And so we set data is equal to object. And we set next. We initialize next equal to null. So this little block of code right here, this little inner class, represents our node object. It's an inner class. What that means is nothing else can access it. We don't want people coming along and messing with our nodes. They don't know how our nodes are organized. Only we know that. And we don't want people messing with the data. And more importantly, we don't want people messing with the next pointers. Because we've got our linked list set up nicely. If somebody from outside tries to access our next pointers, they might move all of the nodes around and we'll lose stuff, as we'll see in a second. So we make this an inner class. The only thing that can access the inner class are objects in the outer class, or methods in the outer class, rather. So by making this an inner class, we restrict access just to ourselves. So now we need a couple more variables. We need to remember where the head is. So let's have a private variable. Head. And we're going to have another, um, sorry. Our head has to be of type node E, of course. H E A D, head. And we're going to have another variable, which is of type int, which we'll call current size. And I'm going to come back to this variable in just a few minutes and explain why we keep that. And then, um, just to round out this section of our, our code, we're going to have our constructor for our linked list. And so this is our constructor for the linked list. So it's just public linked list. And remember, when we write our constructors, we don't have the E in the constructor. And we're just going to have a default constructor. We're going to override the default constructor here. And we're going to set head 
equal to null. And we're going to set current size equal to zero. Then you're going to have a bunch of other code down here, and then the end of the linked list class. So data all holds our E. Here's our data in our, in our node. And next holds a pointer to another node. Let me just briefly um, talk about this current size pointer here. Let's assume I have a list. Here's a list. Next and data. And here's head. OK, so head points to A. A.next points to B, B.next points to C, C.next points to D, and D.next points to null. Okay. So if you ask me, hey, Professor Edwards, how big is your linked list? You guys are supposed to ask me the question. It doesn't matter. I would say my linked list is one, two, three, four. Okay? I could do that. That's fine. And every time you ask me, hey, Professor Edwards, how big is your linked list? I could count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 20. What's the complexity of that counting every time you ask how big is the linked list? You have to count it every time. So if the list has five elements, how many elements do you have to count? And if the list has 10 elements, how many do you have to count? And if the list has n elements, how many do you have to count? n, right? So the complexity of going through the list and saying, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, is complexity big O of n, because you have to count every element. In fact, it's theta of n because you have to count exactly n elements, because that's how big your list is. So one way I could measure the size of my list is I could count it every time you ask me. Another way that I could measure the size of my list is to have a, a variable called current size. And every time I add something to my list, I increase the size of current size. So then, if you ask me how big is the list, I say, it's 1, it's 10, it's 5, it's 1,000. So what's the complexity of that? It's 1, exactly. Every time you say to me, how big is the list, I don't have to count. It doesn't depend on how many elements are in there, because I've got this counter that I've just incremented each time. So I can do it the slow way. I can count every element. That's complexity theta of n. Or I can do it the fast way. I can keep a current size. When I'm adding an element, incrementing a pointer is not going to add any more work relative to the amount of work I've done to actually create the node and add it to my linked list. Right? So my current size um, pointer here basically gives me constant time access to the size of the linked list. And that's something that we always want to have. If we can do, if we can be slow or we can be fast, let's be fast.